Hi, it's Mary Jane here from Home for the Harvest and today we're chatting about growing tomatoes indoors. I love to grow tomatoes, especially year round when it's snowy outside, but it can be kind of tricky. I have tried all kinds of different ways and I really like growing them in a smart garden. Everything is nicely contained, you don't have like a big tent and lights and everything is nice and small and you've got room for your other house plants too. So my favorite way to grow tomatoes indoors is in these smart gardens. I have the Aero Garden here, and this is a click and grow. They're about a month apart in terms of, this was only seeded 10 days ago, and this is a day 40. So you can see they grow really fast. Both Aero Garden and click and grow offer pre-seeded tomato pods, which is really nice. The Aero Garden I think has four different kinds of pods. So I'm growing right now the heirloom cherry tomatoes, and I think that's the most popular one by quite a bit. But there also is the golden harvest ones, the yellow ones, there's the mighty mini cherry tomatoes, and if you have a bigger garden, I think they even have like a mega sized plant that you can grow in those bigger, the bounty farm sizes. Uh, in terms of click and grow, they've got the regular red minis. That's what I'm growing right here, but you can also get yellow mini cherry tomatoes. Pretty much in all of these smart gardens, you're gonna be growing like a cherry type tomato. You're not gonna be growing big heirlooms in these small gardens. So the easiest way is definitely to just go with the pre-seeded pods. But if you have your own tomato seeds, you can make your own pods. You can make your own pods, you can get little inserts from Aero Garden, or you can buy Coco Coir ones. I'll link those in the description. Or you can just buy the Grow Anything pods that both of these systems offer. I recommend using a really short, determinate tomato variety. My favorite tomato variety for growing indoors from seeds from your own seeds is called Tiny Tim. Tiny Tim tomatoes are an heirloom. They grow usually under a foot tall. They're quite cute. You can even grow them in a flower pot. They, they grow really, really well indoors. That's what they're meant for and they don't get too tall. So in terms of a determinate tomato, what I mean is that these aren't gonna get to be big sprawling plants. They kind of reach a height, a predetermined height, and then they set out a bunch of flowers in these nice little clusters here and they grow their tomatoes, they ripen over a few weeks, and that's the end of their life cycle. So that's really what we're looking for for these indoor compact tomatoes as a determinant type. With the pre-seeded pods, you know what you're getting, but if you are gonna grow them from your own seeds, I recommend something like Tiny Tim. Most of these cherry tomatoes are gonna take about 90 to 120 days to harvest, and that's from the time of putting the pods into the garden with the water to harvesting the last tomatoes. So. Yeah, about 120 days is the longest you'd want to keep these plants in there. I just compost the plants after that. One other thing to note is that I have seeded both of these gardens totally with tomato pods, um, which is very fun, but probably not the most efficient way to grow them. I'm not going to get the most production out of these pods. I think if I really wanted to maximize production of my tomato pods, I might only put one or two, particularly in this arrow garden where there's multiple rows here just to give those plants a bit of room. They are bushy. So you can see in the click and grow, they're all in a line and even still they're starting to get a bit crowded. So I, if I was trying to really, really get every tomato I possibly could out of every pod, only one or two, definitely in the arrow garden at least, maybe one or two on either end here. So you don't have to put all of the same things. I just like to grow all of the same things at once, but you can definitely vary things up and you're gonna get more production per pod. Just put some shorter, less bushy plants in the other ones, or you can even get little spacers. So if you've had a smart garden before, you know how easy planting these things are. You just you make sure your gardens are clean. I have articles on my site for how to clean both of these, so make sure that they're sparkly clean and ready. And then you just pop in the pods, you put in some water. With the Aero Garden, you're putting in a little bit of this liquid plant food. So with this size of Aero Garden, it's just two capfuls every couple weeks. Click and grow, the fertilizer's already in the soil, so that's really nice. So that's even easier. You got your pods in, you got your water, and then it's going to be about a week until you start to see germination. So you can see this one has been in here for 10 days, and some of these have two seedlings, some have three, some have one. This one in the front doesn't have any, so we're waiting for that one. But these ones that have two or three, 
I'm going to have to later on pick the strongest one because you really only want one seedling in each spot. The other thing you can do to help make sure that things aren't going to get slowed down is to make sure that the room that these gardens in isn't too cold and drafty or they're not by a window or something. You want to go for like 70 degrees Fahrenheit, 21 Celsius or warmer. These are really heat loving plants so wouldn't keep them in kind of like a semi heated spot. Keep them in a nice warm spot where the plants will be nice and cozy. So once you see germination of these little seedlings here, you can go ahead and pop off the plastic germination domes. So I've only got this one left here waiting. And what I'm doing now is I'm watching for the next set of leaves to appear. The first set of leaves are these kind of oval lens shaped leaves. And they're not true leaves, they're just the first baby leaves. But what I'm waiting for is the next set of leaves that are a little bit more serrated you can see more like a, a real full grown tomato plant leaf. So I'm waiting for the first set of true leaves, of those serrated leaves to appear here. Once that happens, then I'm gonna go ahead and choose which one of these is the strongest in each little pod space and trim the other ones off. So we're, we're a week or two away from that here, but what I'm looking for once they each have their true leaves, then which seedling has the thickest, straightest, strongest looking stem. And I'm going to take scissors and just carefully trim off at the base, as close to the base, as close to the soil as I can get with scissors, the other ones. So you're just leaving the strongest one with the thickest stem. And it is very sad, but we've got to give them each room. It's already really crowded in here. So I did that with these ones. I did that a few weeks in, and now there's only three plants here. I think this one with the click and grow, there was three or four in each one, so this would have been absolutely out of control if I hadn't had done that. So make sure you're thinning your seedlings down to one seedling per spot. After the thinning, things are pretty easy. You're just moving up these lamp arms, making sure that the leaves aren't contacting the lights or anything, because they will burn and get little brown spots on them if they do touch it. So make sure that you're on top of that. Make sure you're on top of the water, the fertilizer for the arrow garden. That's all pretty easy. One care and maintenance step for growing tomatoes indoors that I don't do at all is pruning. I just let them go. So it's particularly easy in the click and grow where there's not too many plants. There's only three plants here. They've got lots of space. I'm just gonna let them go. With the arrow garden, I may have to take out a few stems here and then just to make sure that there's room for some air circulation. Things don't get too stagnant in there, but I'm not gonna top any of these plants. Sometimes people will go and take the main stem, go snip, 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 snip. And this encourages the plant to kind of branch and potentially make more clusters of flowers. Uh, but I, I find that that can almost be too many tomatoes for the plant. It can slow the production. So I'm just gonna let them be and do their thing how they want. And any pruning will really be limited to taking off dead leaves and just making sure that there's enough air so that things aren't becoming stagnant in these plants. So I don't top them. I just leave them and kind of clean up little bits here and there. Speaking of flowers, you can see these lovely little clusters of tomato blossoms here at the top of these plants. So that's where the tomatoes are gonna be. Not every flower was gonna turn into a tomato, but we can do what we can to make sure that we help along pollination a little bit. Now outdoors, these plants would have some wind around them. There might be pollinators. Uh, and, and tomato flowers are self-fertile, but you can just give the flowers and the stems a little bit of a jostle and just help to shake that pollen around in there. You can also use a paintbrush. So if you have a little fine paintbrush, you can actually go into the open flowers and, and get right in there. But usually, honestly, if you just give the plants a little bit of a tap, that can, that can actually really help. So you're making your own wind, I think, at this point. The only other thing you might have to do is that while these plants usually stay quite small, sometimes they can get a little bit floppy and you might have to stake them. So I don't have to do this a lot, 
But what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a, like a barbecue skewer or a chopstick, just pop it in to the soil here behind them. It can be a little bit trickier in the arrow garden because the pods aren't as big, but um, you can go ahead and put that in the soil and then just take a piece of twine and really gently, just as gently as possible with a, like a loose loop of twine, tie the main stem to the skewer. And that will keep it from totally flopping over and that's usually more than enough. But honestly, these things are usually quite strong. So it just, every once in a while, if they get too loaded with too many tomatoes at once, that can happen. So how long is it gonna take to actually get tomatoes? It's usually about 90 to 120 days is your harvest period from the time that you planted the pods and put in the water to harvesting those tomatoes. So they're gonna be in there for three, four, maybe even five months. So just make sure that you're taking care of the plants, you're looking out for any signs of pests uh, because these are going to be in your arrow garden for longer than some of the other pods, like the lettuce pods and things that are a little quicker. These smart gardens really are the easiest way to grow tomatoes indoors. You don't have to deal with potting mix indoors. You're not dealing with some kind of big lighting setup. They're all nicely contained. The one constraint is that you're growing cherry tomatoes. And sometimes you just wanna grow those big heirlooms, but these are really good for the winter. And honestly, by the time that spring comes and you're really ready for those heirlooms, it's time to plant them outdoors anyways, or at least indoors as seedling plants. I just wrote on my website an article for each of my favorite kinds of tomatoes. So I'll send you over there, I'll put the link in the description for those tomato posts because there are some amazing tomatoes that you can grow outdoors where you have lots of space and you've got a big tomato cage. So grow your tomatoes indoors, grow the little cherry ones during the winter, during the spring, but just know that there are some absolutely delicious heirloom and specialty tomatoes that you can grow outdoors once it's warm enough. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.